What's going on folks? Welcome to the latest edition of Nintendo Enthusiast Week Interview. It is I, Sean Long. I'm not feeling all that great, so this will probably be a little bit of a shorter episode. But without any further ado, let's jump into this past week's news. So one of the biggest ongoing stories right now is the whole Devil's Third in North America situation. I teased some things and alluded to some things, and if you actually watched Class vs. Crass, I talked about it more in depth. But I decided to write my article today and detailing what the problems were for Devil's Third in North America. Now, right after this, Mr. Itagaki took to Facebook and said that the game was coming to North America and South America, which is great because, you know, I'm one of the bigger fans of this game and I really want to see it released. But some of the questions I brought up in my article still definitely remain. I never really said that the game was going to be necessarily canceled, just that there's issues with it. So if you want to check out that article, please do. I'll put a link to it on the screen. There's a lot of good information there, some exclusive information as well. And let me know what you think of this whole Devil's Third situation. How do you see it ending in North America? That's this week's question of the week. So one of the big things going on right now in both the real world in the U.S. and in Fire Emblem If is that same-sex marriages will be in the game. As you know, the United States just made it legal for same-sex marriages by the Supreme Court. Now what are my thoughts on this? Cool man, live your life. It doesn't really impact me in any way, shape, or form. Because as long as people are happy and they're not hurting each other, who cares? You know, it's their life. I'm all about living my life, making myself happy, and I hope other people are like that too. So same-sex marriages in Fire Emblem If? Granted, I probably won't use them, but for those that want to use them, and for those that, you know, live that life, then good for them. I'm glad that it's appealing to all people with this game. This week's Retro Game of the Week is brought to you by PunchOutGaming.com. From retro gaming to modern, PunchOutGaming.com has you covered. Join their Facebook group for the best sales as well. Link in description. This week's Retro Game of the Week is a game that's not really that good. If you paid full price for it when it originally came out on the GameCube, you pretty much got ripped off. But looking back at it, it's not the worst game ever, and since it can be picked up for pretty cheap, like $3 complete in box, I recommend you check it out, especially if you're a fan of the films. Enter The Matrix. And I know what you're saying, the game had a lot of problems and stuff, but there was a lot of interesting mechanics, such as the wall running and whatnot, which you didn't really see at the time. If you're a fan of the movies, I definitely recommend you check this game out, especially because it's so cheap. Now, there is a better game, The Path of Neo, but that did not come out on a Nintendo console, so if you only own a Nintendo console, this is your one-way ticket to go. But it's really not that bad, so give it a check. Another interesting thing that happened this week in the world of Nintendo is we've heard both Reggie and Mr. Miyamoto talking out about VR and that it's not quite there yet. Of course, Nintendo does have some history with VR with the Virtual Boy right here, so, Nintendo will probably be very leery about entering this area. However, Reggie has said that they are more interested in eSports than VR right now. And I think that's pretty interesting because Smash Brothers has been a staple of the eSports area, but Nintendo really doesn't have any other games that would fall into line with that. You gotta remember, Splatoon isn't really set up for an eSports-like atmosphere unless Nintendo sets it up like they did during the Nintendo World Championships. And Mario Kart is definitely based a lot on luck instead of skill when it comes to items. Sure, skill does help a lot, but a blue shell is a blue shell and it'll get your ass. So, I think it'll be very interesting to see where Nintendo puts this emphasis on esports, because it could end up being very, very potentially big for them if they could be one of the first companies to put their foot down in the world of esports and really make a mark in it. If you know one thing about me, you know I'm a collector. I love to have a physical copy of the game. And it seems like a lot of analysts are saying we're headed towards an all-digital future, which at some point we will be, but I don't foresee it being anytime soon, and neither does Nintendo really. Nintendo released some sales statistics for some games and versus the physical and the digital copy. Super Smash Bros. only sold 15% digitally, 85% were all retail copies, so that's very interesting, especially considering the magnitude and size of that game, as it's one of the best sellers on the Wii U and both the 3DS. Finally, one of the more interesting stories of the week was Splatoon has sold over 1 million copies worldwide already, in less than a month. And I didn't see that happening. I really thought it was going to be a slow burn. I could see it selling, you know, maybe 300,000 to 400,000 copies by the end of the summer for the Wii U in North America, but holy shit, man, you guys really dig Splatoon. And, you know, I'm definitely a fan of Splatoon. It's a really fun game. 
and it definitely has a great pickup and play feel, but I did not foresee the success. And you know, that's very important because this is a brand new IP from Nintendo, and to see it being knocked out of the park in terms of sales figures, that really shows well and bodes well for the future as well. And that's gonna do it for this week's show. As always, be sure to like the video, subscribe to our page, leave me a comment below. We just passed 9,000 subscribers. That's, that's freaking nuts, man. We're closing in on 10,000. We plan on doing something special for you guys. Uh, make sure you check out all the E3 videos that Jason's been putting up. He's got some more that he's working on that are a little bit bigger projects, but definitely some cool stuff from Jason out of E3 that I've really been digging because I didn't know about some of these. So make sure you check out those other videos. Make sure you check us out Sunday night for Class vs. Crass, and I'll see you guys next week. Later.